I feel like I'm the same person I was last year at this time. PFL featherweight champion of the world, Lance the Party Palmer. Whereas other people perceive me differently because, oh, he won a million dollars, he should do this, or he should be able to do that, or he should take care of this person or this person. And more people want your money that you've worked hard for, and more people feel like they're owed coming into season two and now being the number one seed going into the playoffs, like all that stuff is more important to me than the money that comes along with it. When I go home to our house in Ohio and I see five belts, those belts are always gonna be there. And that's something nobody can take from you. As a fighter, I've just added so much to my arsenal as far as my overall game. And I've added a lot of tools that will make me more dangerous. Right now, I'm training in Toms River, New Jersey with Eddie Alvarez, Frankie Edgar, Zabit, Timur Valiev, Mark Henry. Really great partners, great environment, great coaches. It's where I've been wanting to train for a long time and finally had the opportunity to do it. Lance fits in perfect, man. I mean, he is just, it's like he's been here forever. Like the way he gels with the guys, his attitude, his mindset, how smart he is, his work ethic, just everything about him, man. He totally lifts up our team and everybody around him. And Lance is, is one of the best in the world. And you know, I've been around a while. You know, the things that I've seen him do in these fights, you know, encourages me and it really excites me. I mean, they've coached champions and they've done it and they, they know exactly what it takes to win. So I think that's just it. That's something I've always admired about this team even before I trained here. Frankie's awesome. He's a guy that I've always looked up to even before I knew him personally. So he was the 155 pound champ for a long time and he was the small guy who was winning fights and not really cutting weight and just had that wrestler mentality to just go out there and get the job done and nothing else mattered. And that's kind of the same mentality that I have. It's like the old school wrestler mentality, but it's a mentality that a lot of people don't have. And that's why I'm really grateful to be from a wrestling background. Lance, you know, he's just one of the strongest dudes pound for pound that I ever went with. I'm, you know, I think I consider myself decently strong. And he puts me to shame, man. He's, he's, a, he's a beast. Stud athlete, stud wrestler, stud fighter, man. So having him around has uh, been awesome. I put the work in and visualize, but I know that if it doesn't go my way, I know how to adapt. Nobody's gonna give you anything just because of your seed or your name or anything else. Like guys are gonna be gunning for you even more. And I like that, I prepare for that. So, and last year I wasn't even the number one seed. As far as fighting twice in one night, there was nothing that surprised me at all. My preparation was so spot on. I just had to go out there and fight. He came out. He wasn't as aggressive as I thought he was going to be. I knew that getting the takedown and hopefully getting the finish in that first round would give me more rest, but I didn't get the finish in the first. And then he came out in the second and tried to attack a little bit more. And that's when I was able to land a nice left hand and kind of rock him. And then I took him down again and controlled the round. Lance Palmer did an amazing job. and was literally on Max Coker like a rat on a Cheeto, was just not going to let him go. <laughs> I put that one behind me like right after I got out of the cage because I knew that the next one was coming up. I didn't really think too much or too hard about who was fighting or who I could potentially have next. Andre, he's a great opponent. He was 20 and 0 before I fought him that night. So it was one of those things where you can't take a guy like that lightly. And I was able to out grapple him, get him a little tired, get him exhausted and work to get on top. There were a couple of times where I had his back and I thought I was might be able to get the finish, but I got the job done and nothing else mattered. No! Now I'm still trying to win this year's season, you know. Lance Palmer looks to start his quest for gold again in season two. Gilpin, he was a really tough opponent. He came forward the whole time. It made him a little more available to me, I believe, but I was able to kind of implement my game plan the best and do what I wanted to do in that fight. Hammering away at the body is Lance Palmer. I dropped him on the feet, but I went back to my grappling instead of just, you know, kind of being patient and gave him time to recover where I felt I could have finished him right after I dropped him. But I don't take anyone lightly. I knew he had a lot of submissions. I knew he was slick on the ground and he was going to try to do that if I took him down. So I had to be aware for 15 minutes. There was no way I could, you know, slack off in his guard or be in a position where he's, you know, he's going to try and get the neck or he's going to try and get a choke. That's his style. So I knew I had to be aware of that for the whole 15 minutes. 
There he is, the Brazilian newcomer, Luis Rafael Laurentino. I think a lot of the talk beforehand was to pump himself up more than anybody else. Eu estudei as lutas do Lance Palmer, mas não levei muito adiante porque ele luta de uma maneira muito chata. Eu perdi paciência de ficar vendo o vídeo dele. You know, I watched all his fights and they were all the same, so I knew exactly how he was gonna be in the first, and I knew exactly how he was gonna be in the second. If it went that long, then you know, obviously in the third we saw what happened. So two minutes left to work from the top position. Hammering there it is. The touch. It was awesome. I actually was hoping that I would get the finish from the feet, but I knew once I had him on the ground that he was already hurt from the feet, so I just had to keep pouring it on him, and I knew he didn't want to be there at that point. He was looking for a way out. I just had to give it to him, and that was it. Guys are going to be coming after me more just because I'm the number one seed and I'm the previous champ. I don't look at it as a number one seed thing. I look at it as I got to fight two guys and get to the finals just like I did last year. That's going to be a good fight in my opinion, especially because it's only two rounds. They both have to come out guns blazing in the first. They both have really good skills. They both have the ability to get a finish if that's something that presents itself for either one of them. Gilpin's very dangerous in the grappling aspect of it, and I think he's dangerous enough to cause problems there for Andre if Andre gets into a scramble or if Gilpin causes a scramble with him. I think, in my honest opinion, I'll end up fighting Harrison because he's more known to win first rounds, but I'm not taking anything away from Gilpin because he definitely has the danger factor when it comes to his submission game. They had already fought once. The first fight lasted, what, like a minute or something like that. Another kick from Laurentino. The left hand Kennedy's hurt. Kennedy's, Kennedy's, hurt. Kennedy's hurt. He's out. I like Jeremy a lot, and I know he's a great training partner because I trained with him before, but I've never fought Jeremy, so I don't know if it's different in the cage or if it's the same in the cage, but I know Laurentino starts really fast, and that's how he caught Jeremy in the first fight. So. I think Jeremy will come more prepared this time, but I guess we'll have to find out on October 17th. I honestly don't know enough about Pineda. Mobley's definitely, he's a dangerous guy. He's very skilled. I wouldn't say that he plays it safe because he's obviously very dangerous, but he stays in good position a lot. I would probably bet on Mobley making it to the finals. I don't know much about him other than he doesn't really like to be in a firefight. He doesn't like to get hit a lot. He goes directly to his grappling. And a lot of times off of his grappling, he gets taken down or ends up on bottom. So he comes from a, a tough team of guys, but I don't think he has what it takes to be better than me. I want to be the face of PFL, and that's always been my goal. I feel like I'm a good person outside of the cage. I'm a, I'm a good representative of the sport inside the cage. I don't see any reason why PFL wouldn't want me to be a long-term person in this organization. So I feel that I have put in my time with the organization, and I feel like they see that, and I feel like it's something that's important to PFL also to have people stick around and not just do one-and-done seasons and stuff like that. So. Obviously, you have to put the work in, you have to win the fights, you have to be exciting, you have to be all those things, but I feel like being an ambassador of the sport is the most important thing, and I feel like I do that. As a person, I've just grown, and, and I wanna be taking fighting a little more fun. I take it serious, obviously, but I've always had fun training and everything, but now I respect the time I have in the sport because I don't wanna do this forever, and I wanna be done when I wanna be done. I don't want to have to fight for a paycheck, so I just respect the sport more and respect my time as a professional fighter, and then when it's time for me to be done, then I'll be done.